Hi, my name is Jessica. I'm an educator at Harris Lake County Park, and today we're going to be reading A Log's Life by Wendy Pfeffer. Deep in a forest, a great oak tree stands. A family of squirrels lives in a hole in its trunk. A porcupine chews on its branches. A colony of carpenter ants nests under the outer bark. A woodpecker pecks at the rough bark, searching for insects. He spears one, devours it, and hunts for more. Wood boring beetles burrow under the bark, chewing wood and leaving tunnels. Water and air seep into the tunnels. Toadstools and other fungi, such as mildew, molds, and mushrooms, sprout in these damp places. Slugs and snails crawl up the tree trunk into the tunnels and eat the fungi. One stormy day, a big strong wind whips through the forest. The old oak bends with every gust. Rain pelts its branches. Wind tosses its leaves through the air. Lightning flashes and sizzles down its trunk. A thunderous crack startles the porcupine sleeping nearby. The tall oak begins to topple. Squirrels feel the trembling and scramble out of their hole. One strong gust of blustery wind tears the great oak's roots from the ground. The tree crashes down, shaking the forest floor. Branches break, limbs splinter, leaves scatter. Now it's a giant log. Soon the storm stops and the sun comes out. An umbrella of leaves and tangled branches block the sunshine from the forest floor. The porcupine comes out of its den. Squirrels scamper to see the old hole that was once their home. Under the log, ants rush about carrying white bundles of babies. A spider crawls through cracks and crevices, searching for a dry spot to place her egg sac. Millipedes settle between the log and the wet ground. For now, they're safe from the spider. Termites soon discover the fallen log and move in. They not only eat the rotting wood, they lay their eggs there too. For three or four years, through hot, cold, wet, and dry seasons, ants, beetles, fungi, slugs, snails, spiders, millipedes, and termites live in the log. One winter, the porcupine's hollow log collapses. He moves into the oak log too. In the spring, click beetles snap and click their bodies and flip high in the air before settling in the log. Salamanders, frightened by the noise and sudden movements, dart under the log for safety and stay. In the summer, pill bugs and slugs crawl inside the cool, moist log to keep from drying out. Pill bugs eat dead leaves, salamanders eat the pill bugs, slugs slip out at night and eat almost anything. The old log provides both food and shelter for the millipedes. They eat decaying plants and trees, but spiders eat the millipedes.
several more years of hot, cold, wet, and dry seasons pass. Time, weather, and the chewing, pecking, boring, and tunneling of many animals and insects make the inside of the log spongy. The outer bark becomes soft and damp, and gradually it falls to the ground. Wood-boring insects have no wood to bore. They find another log. The woodpecker hunts for other trees to peck. Spiders spin their webs in drier spots, and the porcupine moves to a more solid log. Slowly, a lush green blanket of moss carpets the rotting log. Its thick roots break down the wood. Over the next few years, the log crumbles. What is left looks like dirt. It feels like dirt. It smells like dirt. It is dirt. Earthworms move in. They turn the soil over just as a shovel does. They burrow down and break up the soil just like a rake does. In about 10 years, the rotting log has become a mound of rich black earth. One autumn day, an acorn falls from a nearby oak tree. A squirrel burrows it in the rich soil. A seedling oak sprouts and grows and grows until one day deep in the forest another great oak tree stands squirrels move in so do carpenter ants beetles and woodpeckers the ants build nests the beetles burrow the woodpeckers peck for years life goes on in the oak tree Then one night, the wind whistles through the trees. The old oak bends and shakes. It crashes to the forest floor and becomes another giant log. Isn't it crazy how many living things use and depend on trees even after they die? And just like in the story, some of those living things help to break down the log so that it can become soil which in turn, of course, is used by trees and other plants. This is such a special life cycle. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit more about decomposers, which are those organisms or living things that help to break down logs and other organic matter. So you can think of decomposers like nature's recycling system. They make sure that dead plant materials like logs and leaf litter and even dead animals are broken down and recycled into soil. Without decomposers, all of that dead stuff would just pile up all around us. Another cool thing that decomposers do during this process is breaking down really complicated things into more simple nutrients that plants and animals can use, like water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and phosphorus. These, um, <clears throat> these nutrients are really important to have in the soil because they help plants grow and of course water is used by animals too. So there are several different types of decomposers. We have bacteria and protozoa, we have fungi, and we have animals. Now bacteria are microscopic, meaning they are so tiny that you can only see them with a magnifier or a microscope, you can't see them with your eyes. They're super, super tiny, and they're made up of just one cell. So us humans and other animals, we're made up of tons and tons of cells. Um, so these bacteria are really, really little. And then protozoa are also microscopic. So they're also super tiny, and they're also made up of one cell, just like the bacteria. But this one cell is just a little bit more complicated has some more structures than the bacteria does, so they're a little different from bacteria in that way. And then we have fungi. So mushrooms are one type of fungus, um, and fungi survive by decomposing and absorbing nutrients from soil and dead stuff. So they don't use photosynthesis like plants do, so they can't convert sunlight into energy. 
Um, so they absorb nutrients from once living things that they are de decomposing like logs. Another type of decomposer is called a detritivore. And we saw a lot of these in our book. So these are the invertebrates, meaning they don't have a backbone, that eat dead materials and waste. So some examples of a detritivore are worms, termites, and millipedes. And first we'll talk a little bit about worms. So you've probably seen a lot of worms in your garden, in the soil. Um, so they like to burrow and live in the soil eating dead stuff. And they mix up the soil and create a lot of air pockets. And all of that turning is really good for plants. So it helps plants grow. Um, just like amphibians, they have, a, they have permeable skin, meaning that water and other substances can come in and out of their skin. And they always need to stay moist um, or else they will dry out. Another type of detritivore is a millipede. And the one that we have here, or one of the ones that we have here, is called the North American Giant Millipede. So this millipede is nocturnal, and they spend their winter in rotting logs or in soil that is uh, warmer than the air. And they also have antenna that can smell, taste, feel, and even find water. So actually, just like amphibians and worms, they also have permeable skin, and so they need to stay moist. So that's why uh, finding water is really important for them. Decomposers play an essential role in our ecosystem, so it's really important for us to know all about them and appreciate them. So thank you so much for reading with me and for learning about decomposers.